Hey everybody, Mr. Pollard here. In this video, I want to share a FET simulation with you. The topic is the pH scale. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch the simulation. I'm just gonna go ahead and click here. This is an HTML5 simulation, so this will run on all kinds of different devices. For this video, we're going to take a look at the pH scale at the macro level. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on macro to open this up. All right, so what just happened is we filled a container with some water. Okay, we can choose different liquids here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and leave water in here right now. If I want to drain the container, I can open this valve to drain the container, uh, or I can go ahead and add some water back in like this. The goal of this simulation is to measure the pH level of a number of different solutions. So I have a pH meter attached right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and move that into the liquid. All right, there we go. So we can see that right now the water is measuring at a pH of seven. Now, what's going to happen to pH if I remove some water? You can see that the pH stays at a level of seven. If I add water, you can see that the pH still stays at a level of seven. The reason for this is pH of water is an intrinsic property of the water. So the pH level does not change based on how much water we have. So if I have pure water, no matter how much, it will always have a pH value of seven. Okay, what we're gonna do now is test pH levels of a number of different substances. Before we do that, I just wanna remind you guys of the setup for the pH scale. pH scale goes all the way down to zero and up to 14. Technically, it can go lower than zero and higher than 14, but normally we're looking at a range of zero to 14. Seven is what we call a neutral pH solution. So pure water has a pH of seven and it's neutral. If we have anything that measures under seven, it is a solution that we would identify as being acidic. If we have a solution that measures above seven, we would say it is a basic solution. Let's look at some of the different solutions here. Battery acid. Battery acid measures at a pH of one. So this is you know, very far on the acidic end of the range. Now, if I add water to this, actually, if I drain some of the acid, you can see that the pH level does not change. It stays one, but if I add water, you can see it actually starts to dilute the acid and the pH level will go up. Um, it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. So the pH didn't go to halfway between one and seven. It's still pretty low because of the way that acids work. So we see that we have a pH here of 1.39. So we were able to raise it, but maybe not as much as we would expect. Let's test some other liquids. Vomit has a pH of 2.0. Soda pop has a pH of 2.5. Orange juice has a pH of 3.5. Coffee has a pH of 5. These are all examples of solutions that are acidic. Chicken soup has a pH of 5.8. This is an acidic solution. Milk, 6.5. Water, remember, was 7. Spit has a pH of 7.4. Blood also has a pH of 7.4. So two body fluids have the same pH, 7.4. Hand soap has a pH of 10. And drain cleaner has a pH of 13. Now, remember, if we add water, we would expect the pH to come down. Currently, right now, we have a half liter of drain cleaner, or 500 milliliters. If I add water up to one liter, I'm going to see this pH change. It's starting out at 13. If I add water up to one liter, got really close there, you can see that the pH came down but it didn't come down as far as we would expect. This is because of how the molecules behave in acids and bases. So we can lower the pH by adding water, but not by as much as we would expect. 
Thank you for watching everybody. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to get updates on all the new science content that I'm creating and posting to my YouTube channel.